Hello, brother. Welcome to Unknown. The light, where darkness will never prevail. We have been waiting earnestly for this day to meet with our Lord. And with his blessings, he said be, and it is. Fifty-one matrons are beloved by God immensely, but they're honoured to be loved by the rest of mankind. Humanity mourns for them, for they, for us. Even the rain and honour nights. But there is a silver lining, and the warmth from each hug of strangers and neighbours, of children and loved ones, of white, black and red, in which there is but one single eye of the needle, and it is her understanding that it can thread us together. <coughs> understanding is a powerful thing. It can mean hearts, it can bring peace, and it can change the world. And with every beautiful sunrise and sunset sense, each day we understand more and more. Each day our differences become smaller and smaller. And now the full moon is marveled by us. Allah Rabba, God is most great. Now the smell of blood has blossomed into flowers, each laid gently and watered by tears as we silently pray for them to rest in peace. Salam. Peace and blessings be upon you all. We embrace in the divine notion of us. In this moment, we share what it means to be human and to eliminate the rest of the world as we come together in solidarity as one. Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, flamed with the candles in our broken hearts, lighting up the darkness with love and compassion. United, united, united. As one, as one, as one. And not just for today, tonight, or tomorrow, but for every day, inshallah, with God's will. On the 30th of March, 2019, 51 innocent human beings have lost their lives. I wrote this poem in response to the Christchurch mass shootings. It wasn't easy for me to write, and to this day, it's so hard to talk about. It's hard to talk about because New Zealand has a small, close-knit Muslim community where we make up only 1% of the 4 million population. So the 51 people that were killed on the 30th of March was the equivalent of a 9-11 attack against New Zealand. Nonetheless, what inspired me to continue to do this talk is how tragedies like this can always be prevented through the power of understanding. Everyone here, as an Indonesian, should be familiar with this term. Beneka Dungal Ika, the national motto which means unity and diversity. Unity and diversity is so important for Indonesia because it is a hybrid society where it encourages the nation to unite together and become one. And with that being said, I am a walking and talking hybrid society myself. My mother is Indonesian and my father is Malay with Indonesian origins. I have Indonesian blood within me and I was born in Malaysia, but I was raised up in New Zealand ever since I was five years old. When I moved to New Zealand, I went to a small farming town school where I was the only Asian in a classroom full of mostly white Christians. However, there was a harmony that I had between my friends and myself where we shared and adapted good values and traditions between each other. My white Christian friends they were so grounded with their values and their morals that they were the very ones that inspired me and encouraged me to wear the hijab. Nonetheless, when I first arrived in New Zealand, I didn't know any English at all. 
But of course, over time, I would learn so that I would be able to communicate and to be understood. There is an Indonesian saying to this, di mana bumi dibijak, di situ lagi dijunjung. Where the earth is stood on, there the sky is respected. In other words, wherever you are, follow the customs of the people of that place. And so, we can still adapt to what will be beneficial to us without losing our own set of values and morals. But imagine if I didn't learn any English. I would have been misunderstood for the past 17 years, and I wouldn't have been able to spread my ideas. The ideas that I wanted to spread included empowering communities and liberating individuals through the power of understanding and embracing who you are. And that's what I tried to do when I competed in Miss University of Zealand in 2018. But now, some might be thinking, what exactly was a Muslim hijabi doing in a Western beauty pageant? Well, growing up, I didn't see anyone that looked like me or I could relate to. So during the beauty pageant, I definitely looked different from the rest of the girls especially because I wear the hijab. But I turned my differences into advantages because I wanted to create unity and diversity by putting a positive light on Islam. This is because Islam and Muslims is always been portrayed as terrorists, backwards, or oppressed. So I wanted to help break those boundaries and stereotypes that came with a stigma. And I wanted to help people overcome their fear of being different, because it is the differences that make themselves and society beautiful. And I would like to point out that Indonesia is an example of how beautiful a hybrid society can be. Ever since gaining independence in 1945, after 350 years of struggle, the Indonesian government has followed a philosophy known as the Venture Solid. The Fantasilla was designed to unite the various ethnic groups found within Indonesia. Indonesia, by far, is the most diverse country in the world. There are 300 different ethnic groups, and there are over 400 distinct languages and dialects. This makes Indonesia a hybrid society, and to unite this extraordinary diversity, on the Pantrasilla, I can read a clutch as a scroll where it says, Nika Tungalika, unity and diversity. So Indonesia is not just beautiful because of its landscapes and its beaches and its volcanoes. It's beautiful because of the unity and diversity which can be seen with the people, the culture, food, art, history, everything. Because it is a hybrid society where the differences make society beautiful by creating, um, by inspiring creativity and encouraging cultural growth. So every time I would come back to Indonesia, I would get so excited. There are so many different cultures that there will be always be something new that I can learn about. My passion for learning about learning other cultures back when I lived in New Zealand, because we do have indigenous group called Māori, where New Zealand is also a hybrid society. So during my high school years, I made the effort and signed up to be part of the Māori form class, where they taught me so many beneficial values, such as embracing who you are by using mana, which is about honour, respect and legacy. And although I have no Māori blood within me, I was honoured to be given a Māori leadership role as my values resonated with theirs. This is because I showed manakitanya, which means extending love and compassion, as it resonated with my Islamic values. I also showed kotahitanya, and this is a concept of togetherness, and I learnt this from my Indonesian and Malaysian value of being one. I wanted to learn more about my Indonesian and my Malaysian values, so for the past couple of months, I've been travelling back and forth to get back to my roots. After growing up and living overseas for the past 17 years, it's been interesting for me to realise all the different influences that have shaped who I am today. As a third culture kid, 
My identity has always been complex. I have a clash of Eastern and Western, Malay and Indonesian, Islam and their minority. However, now I realise that these spirit clashes is what makes my identity unique. I also realise that sometimes I may look at things or think differently than my fellow Malays, Indonesians and even New Zealanders. It doesn't make me any better or any worse. Rather, it gives me a unique perspective on so many dimensions of my life and it helps me to keep to have an open mind. Therefore, my perspectives are constantly changing with the new things I've learned and the things that I've been exposed to. I really do believe that the only way to find the meaning of life is to learn about different cultures and to be exposed to them. To understand others different to ourselves, but still understanding the fundamental idea that we're all human beings and it's our human nature to want to be understood and included in society. So separately, hybrid societies creates inclusivity because it creates the opportunity of unity and diversity as there is a tolerance of cultural differences. Therefore, hybrid societies is a way forward for the future. This is because people are always migrating. People are always being exposed and interacting with people from different cultures. You don't even need to fly to a different country. It could be your neighbour, your peers, or the person sitting right next to you. It's all about making the effort to reach out and to learn and to understand. Nelson Mandela once said, no one is born hating another person due to the color of their skin, his background, or his religion. People must learn to hate, and then they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. And this brings me back to the Christchurch Mosque students. The shooter only attacked because he learned how to hate others who didn't look like him or had values like him. Yes, racism is real and it's evident in all societies, but it doesn't mean that it's acceptable as it can lead to violence like this. We need to change the status quo by beginning with ourselves, our families, our schools and what we teach our children. And when I was in high school, I walked past a moral problem which said, Kotai te kahoa o te nera e kahuna te ma, te mero pangu me te mero vero. There is but one single eye of the needle through which the white, black and red threads must pass. This problem has been an important part of who I am because it reminded me to connect with others and to work towards a common vision. And I was reminded of this problem when I met a non-Muslim mother at the mosque after the Christ search attacks. She told me that she went there with her children so that she can teach them to understand and respect differences. And in that moment, we both cried and embraced one another because we both understood the meaning of understanding. Understanding is a powerful thing. It can mean hearts. It can bring peace, and it can change the world. We're never too young, and we're never too old to understand. So learn and grow as much as you can, and start this meaningful and important conversation with others. Change is only difficult because it's so different to where we're used to. But it is the differences that make ourselves, our society, and love unique. Differences should unite us not divide us. And it is through the power of understanding that it can thread us together. Nonetheless, I never imagined that such a tragedy would ever happen in a little country like New Zealand. But the love and the support of New Zealanders have illuminated the whole world. This goes to show that when we are understanding and when we are compassionate, we can finally achieve unity and diversity. 
What we need is ourselves to make an effort to learn and to understand. Differences should not be seen as problems, but answers to strengthen society. Now, I would like to encourage everyone here, especially the youth, to bring about ways of creating a more harmonious hybrid society. Why I'm targeting youth is because it was the youth that recognised the need of unity and diversity, which ultimately led to the independence of Indonesia. It was the youth that came together and pledged their allegiance towards a new imagined community where Indonesia is no longer segregated by the ethnic, cultural or religious identities. Remember, in 1945, the Indonesian government pioneered a hybrid society through the Panchasila to remind us the importance of being united as one. Let us remind ourselves that it was our forebearers, while they were still young, that united everyone as Indonesians in order to finally achieve independence after 350 years of struggle. Now, more than ever, Indonesia, especially the youth, needs to uphold this value of unity and diversity and continue to be an example of what a harmonious hybrid society looks like. So we need to cherish the differences and we need to cherish the culture. And we can do so through the power of understanding. Thank you.